Good day. Uh, I'm going to talk about distribution in regards to categorical claims. As was aforementioned, uh, valid syllogisms will distribute the middle term, and if the term is distributed in the conclusion, then it must be distributed in a corresponding premise. What we haven't talked about is what distribution is or what distribution means. A term is distributed if all members of that class are referred to. A term is distributed if all members of that class are referred to. Now we have A, E, I, and O statements to talk about. And I'll just write down on the board what distributes what, and then we'll talk about why. And then we'll talk about why. A statements, all P or Q for example, distribute the subject. A statements distribute the subject. E statements, such as no P or Q, distribute subject and predicate. I statements, such as some P or Q, distribute no terms. I statements don't distribute any of the terms. And finally, O statements distribute predicate only. A distributes subject, E distributes both, I distributes neither subject nor predicate, and O statements distribute only the predicate. Now, why does distribution matter? Distribution matters because we need to be making sure that we are referring to all members of a particular class. If these connections are not made, we will not be able to draw any further conclusions about entire classes of things either. This is why distribution is perhaps the most important thing to consider when we are analyzing uh, categorical syllogisms. Now, why do A statements distribute subject but not predicate? It might be useful for me to get out our handy dandy diagram. Here's an A statement. This circle represents the class of all things P. This circle represents the class of all things Q. And of course, our middle section represents things that are both P and Q. You'll recall that when we diagram all P or Q, we shade in all of this first section. And whenever we shade, we're shading the area in which there aren't any members. So when I'm saying all P or Q, I'm talking about all members of class P. Am I talking about all members of the class Q? The answer is no. I'm only saying all P or Q. I'm not talking about all, all Qs. This is why A statements distribute subject only. Unsurprisingly, we're going to do the same thing with reference to an E statement. Remember, an E statement would look something like no P or Q. Back to our diagram, we have P, Q. Now recall when we diagram no P or Q, 
We're shading in this middle section. We're saying that there's no P's that are included in class Q, and we're also saying that no Q's are uh, included in class P. So technically, we're talking about all P's and all Q's. And not to, you know, like, not to be too cliche and beat a dead horse over this, but technically no P or Q means uh, all P are non-Q. And also it's vice versa, all Q are non-P. So in other words, it subsumes both of those statements. That's why an E statement distributes both uh, subject and predicate. And guess what? Anytime you've got an E statement present, you know that what's going to distribute? The middle term. If an E statement is one of the premises, one of those is going to be the middle term. So you know that you're going to have a distributed middle term. Then again, you might break one of the other rules, but you at least know you're not going to break the uh, uh, the fallacy of undistributed middle. Now particular statements will start out with I, some P, R, Q. Some philosophy instructors are persons who wear bow ties. That would be an I statement. So if we have some philosophy professors are persons who wear bow ties, recall that when we diagram particular statements, we designate an X where there is at least one member. That's what some means. It means we know there's at least one really existing philosophy in instructor who wears, who is a bow tie wearing person. Now you'll notice that we're not talking about all philosophy professors, we're also not talking about all bow tie wearers. So we're not talking about the entirety of either class of things. This is why A, A or I statements, excuse me, distribute neither subject nor predicate. So guess what you're going to have to look out for? You're going to have to look out for if the other premise distributes the middle term. Because I statements do, do none of the distribution work. I'm hoping the other three make sense to you. O, o statements distributing the predicate sometimes seems to be counterintuitive to some folks. So I'm going to take my time and explain it for you. Now remember, an O statement is called a particular negation. And it would look something like this. Some P are not Q. <coughs> You'll recall that some P or Q was diagrammed like, or, or not Q, excuse me. Some P are not Q was diagrammed like so. Now, how do we get the statement that we distribute all of class Q. Now this, this is going to sound bizarre, but try to let it sink in. What we are basically saying is that this member P is excluded from the entire class of things Q. So technically we're talking about all Q. We're saying the whole class of things Q are not this person who we're talking about, P. This philosophy, philosophy professor is not a wearer of bow ties. Well, we'd be saying this non-bow tie wearer is excluded from all of class Q. This is why this statement, you know, O states distribute the predicate. Now, Understanding this is sometimes something that needs to sink in, but in the meantime, guess what you can do? You can memorize it and use it, like in so many areas of study. We memorize and, and then we cookbook, as I like to call it. Now, since we've talked about this for a moment, I'd like 
to at least give one or two illustrations of these rules at work.